Hello, my name is Jordan Robinson. For this week's Forum on the Fundamentalist Modernist Controversy, I'm going to look at Harry Emerson Fosdick's sermon, Shall the Fundamentalist Win? and Clarence Edward McCartney's rebuttal to that sermon, Shall Unbelief Win? The New York Herald pointed out that this was a long-running divide between the Orthodox and the Liberal. Fosdick had specific arguments that McCartney would later identify and counter. The first was regarding the virgin birth of Christ. The virgin birth, he said, was not to be accepted as an historic fact by some in the church. He said that the two men who contributed most to the church's thought of the divine meaning of Christ were Paul and John, and they never even distantly alluded to the virgin birth. The second issue Fosdick brought forth was the inspiration of the scriptures. He didn't believe it was absolutely necessary for Christians to believe the original scriptures were the inerrant word of God. The third issue was the coming of Christ. Fundamentalists believed in the literal arrival of Christ in the second coming, but some liberals took a different view. And he said that side by side with these to whom the second coming is a literal expectation, another group exists in the evangelical churches. They say, too, that Christ is coming, but with this they mean his will and principles will be worked out by God's grace in human life and institutions. They don't mean that he'll be coming on the clouds. The fourth issue was the atonement. Fosdick did not identify the modernist view of the atonement, but he said that fundamentalists believe that we must believe in a special theory of the atonement, that the blood of our Lord shed in a substitutionary death placates an alienated deity and makes possible welcome for the returning sinner. So he thought that it wasn't absolutely necessary to view Christ's death on the cross as a substitutionary death. Countering these arguments, uh, specifically on the virgin birth, McCartney said, no intelligent Christian is disturbed by the reference that neither John nor Paul even distantly allude to the virgin birth of Jesus. They cite Paul and John as the great authorities of the church, talking about liberals, and yet men who are silent on this subject. But when they are on a subject such as the atonement, there John and Paul appear in an altogether different light. Regarding the inerrancy of Scripture, McCartney said, there are places in the writings of St. Paul where he makes the most careful and solemn claim to divine inspiration, and that what he declares, that is, his magnificent interpretation of the gospel of Christ has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Regarding the second coming of Christ, McCartney said, It means the presence and the companionship of him whom not having seen, we yet love, on whom, though now we see him not, yet believing, we rejoice with joy unspeakable. Remember, Fosdick didn't give a modernist interpretation of the atonement. He only listed it as one of the things fundamental, fundamentalists hold steadfastly. McCartney did, though, and he said, why, may we ask, are the rationalists not interested in giving some explanation of the atonement? If the great primary fact of Christianity, the death of Christ for the remission of sins, is the rock upon which their feet stand, their refuge, and their hope, why are they not more interested in the meaning of that fact? Why is it that the only time they talk about the atonement is when they are assailing the traditional views of historic Christianity? And he pointed out how Paul said to the Corinthians, I delivered unto you, first of all, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. And he said, Is there in the whole world today a rationalist or a modernist who can say that to any city or church where he is, has preached? And after this, Fosdick was actually offered a pastoral position, according to the New York Times, with the Presbyterian Church. But he denied it because he didn't want to have to make a creedal confession. And if he had joined the Presbyterian Church as a minister, he would have to make the, con the Westminster Confession of Faith. So both of these took places in Presbyterian churches, but it was something that was affecting not only them, but many other denominations. Thank you very much.